Welcome back everybody, this is the Pinball Room. I'm your friendly host, Steve. Today we're working more on our Led Zeppelin Pinball homebrew custom machine. What we're gonna work on today is adding in another diverter, but this one's different than the last one. This is gonna be a software and electronically controlled mechanical diverter, okay? And where we wanna have it, if you remember, we've got this horseshoe shot here, right? And the horseshoe shot is great because it gives us lots of flow. The ball can just whip around, but there's different times where I want this to be a different shot, okay? And I want to make it to where this piece here in the back can get lowered down through the play field. And when that gets lowered down, we'll have another ball guide behind it. And yes, these ball guides don't really line up. Okay, this is just to illustrate the point. We will make adjustments to all of this. But when that um, section of the, of the ball guide goes down, I want this ball to then be able to come down over here. Okay, and there's going to be a hole there. And that hole it's going to come out here and it's going to continue down around behind the staircase down to our little friendly scoop okay which then we'll pop the ball up behind this ramp over here to our right flipper and we'll be off and running okay so that'll be a chance to stop the ball a consistent pause where we can go through mode selections and other things in the menu yeah so that's the idea sounds easy right okay so how are we going to go about that well I went to my friendly pinball supplier, pinballlife.com. Shout out to Margaret and Terry over there. They are doing a great job. And I found this, I forget what it's called. It's on my build materials in the notes, a Stern auto plunger bracket. And it came with <clears throat> the bracket that's gonna mount up underneath the play field with the coil, the coil stop. And then I went through and I got a separate replacement plunge that goes from like a flipper mechanism, okay? And that's gonna fit down inside. And this will pull it down, okay? Now the other thing we need is a spring. So I also got a high compression spring. And as you can see, this one's uh, a little taller than what we need, so we'll cut that down and make it the right height. But that will then allow this to get sucked down inside and then come back up to the height we need. Now, this little flippy floppy here at the top is not gonna work, okay? So this just has uh, like a, com a compression pin pushed through it. We'll pound that out. We'll pull this piece of plastic out and then we'll replace that at the top with a 3D printed piece that's going to come down around that. The pin will go through that, hold it in place, and then that will come up to either just something that's going to grab onto this piece of metal and pull it down, but I want that to be like as thin and low profile as possible because as you can see, I'm kind of running out of room here in the back. So what I'm thinking is actually, um, and we have to see, I haven't done it yet, but I'm thinking we'll go through a 3D model basically a ball guide, okay? A piece just like this, thin, plastic would probably be a little bit thicker, but just like this, that'll match in here on the horseshoe. And at the bottom, it'll continue down as a single piece that'll have some stuff with like some flanges. So when it comes up, it doesn't come up through the play field too far. That'll be on the bottom side here. And then kind of come down into like a special cap that'll, that'll mount onto this bracket. Not sure how well you can see that, sorry, okay? That's my thought, haven't tried it yet. Um, I, feel conf I feel confident about this coil, I feel confident about the spring and this plunger rod. It's just about making sure we can get a good connection onto this plunger rod that'll hold it secure. And then a connection up to the ball guide. And whether well, that's a 3D printed ball guide for that section, we'll see. This is not an area that's ever gonna get direct hits by the ball, so I'm not worried about it being like the plastic being slammed by the ball. Honestly, I'm more worried to see how long these ramps hold up <laughs> from that. Anyway, so that's where we're gonna try it, all right? We'll start with that, and uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. All right, so that's what I modeled, and here's how it turned out. And I think it's gonna work out really great. Let me go through and tell you really fast how I kind of came up with these curves and angles. I'm not a, a math whiz by any means. No, I was an English major. Um, so I don't really know the best way to do the geometry. So here's how I did it, how I calculated out how to make that curve. And it, it turned out really good. So the way I went about it, so remember I'd said that I needed to go through and cut this piece of metal because it had a longer curve. I needed to make sure it actually had room, the ball had room to come over here. So I cut that down. I went through and I measured, okay, how big is the space between here, okay? that I need to make. And I just did it here with my calipers, kind of from end to end, and came up with right about, well, right about 120 millimeters. So I said, okay, 120 millimeters. That's the distance between the two ends here on the curve. But then how tight of a curve does that need to be? 
So then I went through and I just measured from here, the top of the curve here to this wire form. And I knew that that came out to be, when I measured it, it was right about 34 millimeters. Okay, is where I ended up. So anyway, that's how I got that. I kind of like used my tape measure and got down here. So okay, about 34 millimeters. So I went into Fusion 360 and as I went through and I modeled this, I went through and I used a revolve tool. So I came out from the, um, from the x-axis, that center point, anyway, came out about, I think about 70 millimeters. I had to kind of experiment a couple times. At first I started, okay, 60 on each side, 120, right? Boom, did the curve. Well, that was like way taller. I wasn't getting the gap here. That was for a much tighter circle. I needed a much broader circle, but then just kind of chop off the very top part. So I just drew some lines on my sketch file um, inside there of 34 millimeters down and kind of move it down until everything lined up. So a little bit of trial and error. That screen play was just kind of like the final thing playing it back. You didn't get to see all that. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. Um, ask me a question. I'm happy to run through it with you again offline or do another video, etc. So, but long story short, 120 millimeters here, about 34 millimeters height. I went through and played around until in three, Fusion 360 until I got that curve, okay? Then as far as, far as for the height here, we need the height of the ball guide, right? We need the height of the ball guide, okay? Plus right now I'm using these spacers. There's another two millimeters, these little plastic spacers that hold it in place, okay? And then the half inch of the play field wood, okay? So it has all of that, okay? And then at the bottom of that curve, I went through and just modeled something pretty simple here, okay? It's got a little lip, just like another like little T, okay? That comes on, on it here, okay? Pretty smooth. But it has um, a lip here of about, I wanna say about five or six millimeters, maybe eight millimeters, I forget. But that way, you know, when, the, when it's coming back up, I wanna make sure it stops at the play field. So this little lip is gonna, you know, it'll, it'll catch the play field and keep it from going up too far, okay? And then this bottom part here, again with calipers, I went through and I took this plunger, okay? We removed that push pin and I went through it and I measured, you know, the distance inside here between, that's about five millimeters, just over. So I made mine five millimeters, so it'd slide through. The width of this here, okay? was about 13, but I wanted some overhang to make sure that it can hold the spring in place so the spring doesn't slide up on it. So I made this about 18 millimeters wide and then the height. So I just measured all that. And I actually, when I printed, I did a really small test print instead of wasting the plastic. I've been learning a little bit. Everything was great. Went through to test it here. I made that hole just a little bit too small. It was three millimeters. So on the next one, I measured my wire. I kicked it up to four millimeters. And there we go, okay? And it stays in place. So this is the final piece here, all right? This is what's gonna be in the plunger, okay? This will be in here, and this wire's got a little bit off center, but it'll be here like this, and then with the spring, it's gonna hold it in place. Okay. Gonna slide that on the plunger, plunger in there, and there we go. And this is staying right about level with the top of this, which is where it should be. So it comes up to hit the play field and I've still got a little bit of plunger left. We've got about that much left still that's down inside, which is good. And it comes down there. And then I went through and measured out how much travel it needed. Again, it's the height of the ball guide, about 25 millimeters for the stainless steel. That's how much it needs to move. So I made sure we had that much um, travel. So it gets pulled down all the way. It's gonna be coming down about 27 millimeters, I think is where I might end up to be down inside the wood. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think we're set. Now we just gotta go through, and uh, I'm not that much of a, of a woodsmith here. <laughs> gotta go through. Oh, and so we can take this now and test and look and see that, hey, look at that. That fits in there perfectly. Okay, this is right in the center. So now we've got to go through and we've got to cut that out of the play field. That's what's going to be fun. All right.
Here we go. There's our curve. The CNC version will be much cleaner. It's all right. <laughs> okay, got everything back in. Okay, tap the pin through. We're not coming off now. Here we go. So it all it has just a tiny bit of a lip here. So I need to model this guy. It's a couple millimeters shorter. All right, got the new one. Doesn't look any different, but it's two millimeters shorter. Oh yeah, nice and flush. It works. Pretty slick. <laughs> All right, there you go. That was kind of an easier one today. I like it. Next big thing is going to be getting a subway system hooked up to take the ball underneath all the way down to the scoop. Take it back out on the play field. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.